hopefully you can see this, but I'm in position now. I've got my flexible screwdriver, which helps. You could do this with, with a little stubby one probably, but man, this thing is nice. It really helps. So I've got that screw into place in the front. That's going to hold things for me. Now, I'm probably going to have to reposition here. Let me try to crawl in place, but basically, we need to get a hex nut on the stud back there. Hopefully you can see if there's just a little bit exposed. We need to get hit up, get that hex nut on there. Then we can reconnect the, uh, reconnect the wiring, put everything back together. I have to lie on my back to do this, so let me get in position. All right, so I'm lying on my back in the floorboard. Hopefully you can see back there. What I ended up doing was I put the hex nut on the end of my index finger and reached it up into place and just pressed it against the end of the stud and then kind of just twisted it a couple times to get it started. Now I've got my 11 30 second socket. I'm going to see if I can get... Man, this is tough. Especially with my non-dominant hand. Laying on your back. There we go. I got it on there. I'm just going to twist it by hand a few times. Dag on it. Oh. It's too hard to film and pay attention to what I'm doing, but that's the idea. Once you get it locked on there, it doesn't have to be tight. You just want to hold it in place. So, that's the idea. Let me finish this off and we'll wrap this project up. Alright, so I finally got that last hex screw on and we're ready to put everything back together. Um, if you want to, you can try to put your foam padding back in place. I'm going to tuck mine back in since it came out in one nice neat piece. And then I'm going to try to pull this rubber pad back down as well. Like that. And then uh, we can take our wire connection back up. Just gently push the connector back in, snap it in, and we're ready to fold the carpet back up. Mine kind of came out from behind the door panel over here, or the, sorry, the toe panel, whatever you want to call it. See if I can get it tucked back behind there. Push everything back up underneath the ducting. You want to block that. And then we're ready to put this plastic cover back on. Remember it had two Phillips screws. I've got it upside down, dummy. No, I had it right, sorry. It was like that. You can put your two Phillips screws in, and lock it into place, and hopefully now you will have both warm and cold air. I will uh, I'll fire up the truck here in a minute and give it a test and see what happens. But I'm hoping that that solved my problem. Um, I'm not going to lie, this was a huge pain in the butt just because of the location of that one screw in the back. Um, I mean, this could be like a 15 or 20 minute job if they had just moved the actuator up a little bit or if they had just redesigned this plenum box so that it was accessible right here. You could be in and out in 20 minutes. Instead, it's taken me way over an hour just because I fiddled around with that screw so long. And this might be one of my least favorite repairs that I've ever had to do on this truck just because that was so tedious. And there's just no, no working space under there unless you're a tiny person. It's really, really uncomfortable, um, but it's done. Hopefully my problem solved, and I hope that this video has been helpful. Sorry that it's dragged on so long. Uh, it was just a really cumbersome process, um, but I'll post links in the description on how to get the uh, repair kit from Heater Treater. Um, I'm pretty impressed with their product. We'll see it, if uh, everything works well now, but I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, good luck if you take on this repair yourself, and thanks for watching. Alright, so I know I just signed off, but 
I wanted to give you one last shot of the repair in action. I just confirmed that uh, my actuator and Blendor motor is working correctly now, and you can you can see it in action. Um, that's the shaft right there that turns the Blendor motor, and if you adjust the controls on the dash, you will see it rotate slowly. Hopefully, you can see that. So that's a good sign. Um, that's a good way to test it after you're done. You can see it rotate back now. So, success. I just wanted to give you a shot of that, uh, give you confirmation that this repair does work. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful.